What I wanted to talk to you today about was some of the megatrends. So these are megatrends which we believe exist, uh, apply across lots of industries, but certainly apply to television news today. The megatrends of why consumption is changing quite rapidly and why we believe that mobile uh, really presents uh, the uh, solution to uh, responding to uh, consumers today. Um, now, these should feel a little bit obvious, but the first of those is that we live in a world of on-demand, that we today expect to be able to watch the content we want to watch whenever uh, we want to watch it. We also live in a world of mobility. We expect to be able to watch the content we want to watch, to engage with the content we want, wherever we are. And, you know, for news in particular, for TV news, this idea of a 9 p.m. appointment on your living room sofa with the nightly news, that that's become a uh, almost sort of a, a fanciful idea uh, amongst younger consumers today. We also, um, for, for media organizations, we also are challenged, I think, um, by the concept of what breaking news means in a mobile world. You know, what's happened with uh, notifications and the uh, rise of... Uh, and the rise and, and the, the, the rise and ease of, uh, of uh, mobile devices has been that some of the traditional ways in which people have been informed about breaking news are starting to uh, really fall apart. You know, the last big innovation um, uh, we believe in TV news was when Ted Turner founded CNN. And when Ted Turner founded CNN, he did so with a brilliant insight. And his brilliant insight was that he could use a linear broadcast distribution uh, method, that was cable news, as a way of delivering breaking news. And all the apparatus of CNN and all the sort of other channels that have followed have been basically about this idea, which is linear de distribution method, breaking news, um, shove it through, and that, that's effectively um, what those businesses are set up to deliver. But the problem, of course, is today is that we don't find out increasingly about breaking news from television. We increasingly find out about it from social media and from our mobile devices, which creates this whole challenge from a, for a, from a content organization about how you respond to that change. And the other thing, more closely related to the news industry, is this idea of authenticity. Because one of the big uh, shifts we believe um, today is, is this move away from, this move sort of move to disintermediation. This move away from one media organization um, providing everything you need to know to a, a model where consumers can go on the social web, can find out what they want to uh, uh, be informed about. And Twitter, of course, is a great example of that. And what Twitter offers, we believe, is authenticity in today's age. And actually, if a, a, a plane crashes, as indeed it did in, uh, the other week, you'll find out about them often first on Twitter. You'll, f you'll find some of the, uh, the, uh, the most authentic, perhaps, reactions to that on the social web, you'll find people who are reporting the story, people who are involved in the story, uh, citizen journalists telling you about what's going on. And if you contrast that with the sort of uh, the glibness, perhaps, of personality and presentation, which dominates traditional television, that's something that we believe that media organizations need to respond to. And certainly when you look at um, you know, some of the, the forward-thinking organizations I believe today, and Vice would be probably one of the best examples I can think of, what Vice has recognized uh, in the brilliant program that they're producing is that authenticity and rawness and storytelling engages consumers. Uh, rather obviously, we live in a world of social, so any, any discussion of what it takes to rebuild traditional media for today's age has to recognize that we now live in a world where we want to discuss content, we want to share content, and that, share, and that sharing itself has become a core part of the overall experience. And therefore, if you were trying to recreate television news as we are at uh, Reuters, your shopping list, your recipe effectively for trying to rebuild TV news says that you're going to have to make it on demand because that's the way that people watch content today. There's a recognition that on demand doesn't quite work with mobile because, um, um, or, sorry, with video because if it's uh, recorded, then that's not going to be, and it's several hours old, well, that's not going to work. So you need to find a way to simultaneously make it up to date. You've got to build it for the devices we uh, use today, the mobile devices. We believe the televisions in our own hands, the four-inch screens that we carry with us, rather than necessarily the 40-inch screens on the wall, that you've got to pack it with rich, authentic editorial, and that you've got to deeply embed it within the social fabric of the web. And for us at Reuters, we say that you've got to create it for a group of consumers who fundamentally have given up on television news, and it's a group of consumers who are broadly uh, under 50 years old. And that is the foundation really for Reuters TV. So as you've uh, probably gathered at least, uh, Reuters TV is a, uh, a mobile app and what we uh, deliver in it is television, uh, we launched it just uh, about six weeks ago, what we deliver in it is television quality news but with a utility which we think responds to the modern age. We have two services in Reuters TV, our flagship service is something that we call uh, Reuters right now and what right now delivers is a, effectively our attempt to reinvent the television news bulletin away from a mass linear broadcast into one that is personalized 
for every single user. Um, if you think about the way that a traditional uh, news show is constructed, effectively, uh, team editors and producers will sit around in the morning. They'll say, what are the important stories we want to cover today? They'll decide what those 10 or so stories are. Evening will come along. Uh, they'll, produce, uh, they'll have produced the stories that they wanted to cover in the morning. They'll call in the host to, to turn up the music. Um, dun, 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 dun. He'll sit down, and effectively, you as a viewer have that linear extrapolation to television news that perhaps we grew up with. And what we uh, do at Reuters TV is actually we've got an editorial operation that runs uh, 24 hours a day in, uh, in 200 countries where we produce editorial content as news breaks. So as news breaks around the world, we produce stories um, to, uh, to cover that news. As the news changes, we update those different stories. And for every single story that we produce in Reuters TV, we produce it to multiple edit lens, a small, a medium, and a long version. And we then tag every single piece of content for its topicality, for its regional relevance, uh, for its newsworthiness and a range of other factors. And then what we're able to do on the fly is to be able to assemble a personalized news show for each user with all of the characteristics of traditional television, but absolutely sources that user so that, it's in it, so that it is uh, core to their interest, to their location, but, but simultaneously on demand and up to date. We think it offers a great uh, utility uh, combined with editorial excellence that we think is really interesting uh, for mobile consumers today.